Hello, everyone. Chris Brown here for Murmur. I have the privilege of being joined by Mahesh Anantha, the Director of Cardiovascular Services in White River Hospital in Arkansas, Complex PCI and uh, Peripheral Operator. Um, Mahesh, thanks for joining us, man. We're really excited to see what you got today. Oh, thank you, Chris, for having me. And um, this has been a, a very good thing for me, trying to post things on Twitter as a big transition to Murmur. And I literally love the group and look at all your uh, ideas and share things. It's, it's a very nice thing. And thanks for inviting me and in, to be in the meeting today. Yeah, no, we're happy we, you can be here. What do you got for us? Awesome. Let's just jump into the case. I'm just going to show you the first picture of a presentation of a patient. I'm going to show you what was done before the patient came because I have access to his cases, uh, what was done before that. Uh, let's just quickly get through this. So this is a gentleman um, who came to uh, another physician for elective intervention, and uh, he has had history of bypass in the past, 70-year-old, um, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. Um, at presentation, um, this was a, a, an outpatient procedure that he had, and this was the, the finding that he, that he had. And he has had stents placed multiple layers in his RCA in the past, and as you can see, it's pretty severe instant stenosis involving the RCA. Um, just going through the other pictures, he has open lima and stuff. So they, they decided to do the intervention on the right side. Just looking at the picture, like, I mean, I don't know if you were just hold on, just ballooning and trying to see what to expand this versus just and any other therapy that you just go right away starting. Yeah, I mean, we're laser first, um, you know, IVUS and then lithotripsy, but I'm sort of a laser first, depending on what the pathology is. If that's neoatherosclerosis, you know, we'll treat the atherosclerosis based on its calcification or not calcification. But if it's uh, NIH, we would we would laser this probably on contrast. Um, if it's underexpanded, which th the stent doesn't look terribly underexpanded there. I mean, it just mostly looks like there's Scar stuff tissue. in the stent. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. generally what we would do. But I mean, the pathology really dictates what we do based on the image, the IVIS imaging. Perfect. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But someone else was operating this case and um, they said war and they were able to pass a balloon. I mean, they don't, they're not an IVIS uh, uh, operator. They don't usually IVIS vessel. So here just like tried using a balloon and tried passing a cutting balloon. They couldn't do that. And then they got a decent flow at this point. And I was hoping it stops here, but then You'll see that. Mm, yeah. that me and they were able to pass that stint, huh? I know, right? That's, um, I'm, 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 this really freaks me out here at this point. Like, and, and the stent is not even like distally covering the entire lesion too. But also, you shouldn't be doing a stent with like four layers of stent in there. But, but anyway, this is what it ends. Mm. It looks like, and they took a picture. We're happy, but you can see now, this part it's not expanded at all. It's it looks no. even more expanded compared to just after ballooning. And clearly at the end, they're looking at multiple use and trying to pass a balloon and trying to inflate that. And they, they, they documented that the, the middle part of the vessel is underexpanded, dog bone, and couldn't open up. And just Timmy 3 flow and sent him home. Um, so came back in three days after that. Um, and this is what the picture looks like. Um, but the, the presentation was an RCA STEMI. Um, clearly oh, they came no. in the elevations. Uh, uh, pretty bad chest pain and that's what's going on. One thing I've also noticed is, yes, the AL support is good, but then it, it doesn't sit really uh, uh, great, but uh, AL.75 um, was the best catheters I've all used. And I, I usually start with AL.75 in most of the rights, um, just because um, I'm so used to using ALs for a lot of cases. But this is what we got at this point. And as we can see clearly in the middle of the vessel, that stent is extremely underexpanded and it's dog worn. And, and maybe over a period of time, it started getting even worse, I feel like, compared to the last picture I compared, it does look even worse. So right now, my goal is to just to establish flow and try to get the fellow out of chest pain and make sure that his myocardium survives. So we were able to get a wire across, um, had some difficulty passing through that part, but then just balloon at the 2025. Um, couldn't pass an NC balloon or anything at this point. Right now, would you just keep going or just like stop and say, listen, we established flow, just bring back and do some more no. after? I think, I think you're going to, you know, you're at risk of having the same problem. If the, if the patient's compliant with antiplatelet therapy and they, their presentation is acute coronary syndrome like this, I think you got to do um, what you can to try and make this as optimized as possible. You're in a tough spot though, man. You got a lot of layers of metal. Somebody else added a little extra metal for you. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I did expand as much as possible with the 2.5 NC and then we put a, a try to put a, a cutting balloon stuff in. Yeah, I mean, yes, laser for scar tissue at that point, but now that's the problem is just stent clearly including the lumen on the vessel. Past IVUS, it's just extremely right around the IVUS that you can see the stent uh, giving difficulty even for the IVUS to pass. Just slowly passing balloons and try to pass a cutting balloon stuff wouldn't do the job, but, but expand it as much as possible. And I 
did pass a two and a half shockwave in there with the hope of breaking something that's under there and try to establish flow and we just did a little bit of better expansion. I don't know, like I was just running out of options at that point and said I want to get somehow an expansion at this point. Didn't want to use some fancy devices and things and just, just start to do some ballooning and stuff. But he actually felt a lot better. That's a shockwave balloon actually going and trying to expand um, the vessel last That's pretty possible. good. Yeah, it looks better than it did. Point. Um, yeah, that's that's actually a three O shockwave I was able to pass after. It looks decent, but I'm really not convinced at this point. Uh, it's the perfect result, but the, the dog boning is still in there, and it's still it's still not great. But it's better. He, he completely is inferior wall, as you can see, is moving, and his Bible inferior wall EF right after that was actually normal, and his proponents came came down. It was not a big bump or anything. It it, it was pretty immediate. He came to the hospital, lives like 20 minutes away from the hospital. Um, so I just look, just keep looking. I don't know what I'm trying to do, but I just keep looking in multiple views. And he does have left side disease. He has cirque disease and stuff, and he has lima that's patent. So nothing was done at this point. So anyway, as a stage intervention, this is what I personally did. I thought like I don't think um, this is good. So I brought him back the the next day after so much contrast being given the first day. Looking at it, I decided to just uh, um, rotate through that lesion um, and yeah. yield, yield and stent ablation at this point because there's nothing. No, I think that's a do. good. I think yeah. it's a reasonable choice. You got that distal edge thing you're going to have to get through that he couldn't, your partner or whoever couldn't pass anything through anyway. So right, I think right, a forward right. cutting device makes sense here and it gets you the space you need to deliver whatever else you want. I, think, I, like, I, I like that. Perfect. So, and also like the other thing is, as you were mentioning, there's a lesion right after that. The stent is underexpanded here, but this part right after the stent has a pretty tight lesion there. And that was covered with just one layer and there's no other layer. So there's a, either a stent gap. I can't pass. I was past this point and nothing would pass beyond that. So try to go ahead and um, choice of your uh, your uh, road ablation catheters. And I'll, I, from my experience, I always think like, oh, never, never a one to five, just always a one five because of the fusiform shape and stuff. But would you have preference like if you can't pass a one five at this point? No, I'm a, I'm a one five all, all the time guy. Yeah. I mean, we used to step the catheters up. Um, okay. I don't do that as much anymore because of lithotripsy. I sort of see it as a facilitator of, of lithotripsy more than I see it as a, a debulking device per se. It's still nice that it debulks some of the calcium, I think, you know, right. but um, I just take a one five burr and I burr pretty fast. I think maybe faster than other, not other people, but uh, you know, a lot of people burr at that 155 and that makes sense to not activate platelets. But now that we have antiplatelet therapy, I think that's less relevant. And so I burr between 180 and 200 essentially. Oh, nice, nice. That's I, I love those points because you said said it exactly right. That's exactly what I what I followed. Like all my all my birds that I've been stuck in the past and side stems are all one to five. Just bad mm -hmm. things like it's all happened in one to five. So I never literally go with one to five. All one fives, um, and then I agree. Like I go higher, like one eighty to one eighty five. Not I never went to two hundred, but maybe it's not a bad idea. Just I went to one eighty five, uh, <clears throat> one eighty in this, and just used a guide liner um, with the support of the JR. As I said like the AL was kind of like twisting the vessel. I felt this was a better choice with. Eight French uh, JR and I was able to pass a guideline through that and shockwaved again just to try to expand more and then did pass. Um, I'll just quickly go. So this is a this 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 is a one fiber actually. I never used one, one fiber, fiber. Yeah. 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 So we used a one fiber. Uh, cleaned up and I can see the stent starting to expand more, but I still couldn't pass that to that second lesion that I'm worried about. So here trying to pass more balloons and trying to facilitate, get through that, multiple road ablations, um, and finally felt like yielded decent. Um, yeah, it does look like it's getting a little bigger there, doesn't it? A little it? bigger, like the lumen is getting bigger, it felt, and, yeah. but you, you know, just something stands your eye, like you're like, you know, it's the, the, the enemy of good is better. At this point, I'm like, you know what? I've achieved some something that's better in the middle part of the stent, and I will concentrate on this part later at some point in the future. So send him home. And you know, this guy can have pain from a lot of things, but he's just a very anxious guy. He came to clinic and he's like, I don't think I'm feeling that good. I know you felt great immediately after, but now it's getting worse. And we were just, just bringing him back at that point. I said, just take a look at it and see what's going on. So I looked at it, I said, yes, the middle part still looks open, it's great. But I felt like I can do something about that mid to distal part, uh, mid, mid part, uh, a little past the stent. So I decided to go a little more policy and said like, okay, let's do a 170 fiber this time, maybe a 2 depending on depending on what it looks like. Um, so I was I able like to it. use uh, a 175. My hospital hates me. I also did a 2 on that <laughs> just because it's just the, the guy keeps coming back with clots. And I, and I was able to get through it after the lesion that I was worried about. And I'm like, should I really pass a stent at this point to cover that lesion? It's, it's an actual lesion. We rode through that. We ballooned it extensively. It's going to create inflammation. I, I was inclined to cover if I can achieve a better expansion in that area. 
which I felt with repeated injection that that area looks opened. pretty good. Yeah, and then we ended yeah. up and and I I felt like I should be doing this, but I'm gonna do it like I just passed a, a stent right past those stents in that area of disease. And I think yeah. that makes sense. I mean, you got to deliver medication. Right, you know, exactly. if you had a really good result and drug coated balloons were more affordable, maybe that would have been a thing to do here. But exactly. in, the, in the setting of of their cost prohibitiveness in North America right now, we're we're kind of still in a tough spot. And I mean, look at that result though. I mean, you you, right. know, you can't complain about that. So no, this guy came in July last time. So this is our stand. Like, just, just did a, a pretty big size. Was it? I think I did a three two a three five stand in the. In the mid part um, and it landed nicely. I checked the IVUS, everything looked okay. I said, it's not gonna mess with this anymore. The guy, this was back in July or uh, uh, before that and this has been almost so many months. He came back to follow up his in clinic and he says somehow he feels better. I'm like, you know, you were still getting blood before. You should have felt better at that point too. But psychologically, I told him we really fixed that artery really good and, and he's just, just doing a lot better at follow up in clinic. And he's very compliant with his medications, never stopped it. This, this happened the first time when he was actually taking uh, aspirin and Berlinta, the, the stent clar off. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you sort of documented or demonstrated how important it is to actually confirm stent expansion, you know, with imaging. You came back after somebody didn't image and, you know, did all the right things and you reestablished his flow. And then, you know, I, we have to applaud your effort on persisting because you, you know, you did what you could. And a lot of people don't wrote out stents because of their their, I guess, fear is maybe the right word, but I, I think, you know, you have to have the right tools to treat the patient and you had all the right tools and you did all the right things. And, uh, you know, so we got to applaud you on that and your result is oh, outstanding. You. So how are yeah. you going to, how are you going to complain? And, you know, maybe he does feel a lot better. Maybe that little napkin ring thing was, you know, was causing like a problem, the, but it's, yeah. it's completely gone now. So that is, that is true. Like, and I, I, I felt like it's, it, it looked like a very small vessel to begin with, but actually when you open it up and see, it does look like a decent area. And that's the only vessel supplying to inferior wall with that ischemic looking left cert, which uh, is not giving much of a collateral to any of this area. So he's just basically dipping on his RCA for his own circulation. So I felt, felt, felt good, but it's a little, it lives every time in the lab when you go in there, you always think about like just starting with the rotor and a stand and everybody's like freaking out, just, just telling you, oh, are you sure? And then like, you know, the, the, the manager of the cabinet, they're like, oh, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, just, we've done this before, don't worry about it. Like, it's not a problem, but, but they're all like, just, just need to prepare them and tell them things can happen. Yes, you can end up with complication. It's just more about like how we prepare and deal with it if that happens. And um, exactly, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more, man. Yeah, perfect.